Hey guys, gals, and everyone else, it's your Dungeon Master Chris here, welcoming you to episode 12 of Party in Peril Villains. Just a quick reminder, if you aren't subscribed, please make sure you do so now so you can stay up to date on all the episodes. And if you could do us the biggest of all favors, we need you to share this podcast with friends or on social media so we can keep growing the audience here. If you do enjoy the show, make sure to check out all the other great podcasts and shows we do over at nerdsloth.com and catch our live streams over at twitch.tv slash nerdsloth. Where we last left off, the Hellmates were confronted by the regional boss monster, Grim Crown the Maddening, who asked them questions about the Book of Souls. However, they escaped their imprisonment in Tehegre with the help of Sethrax and journeyed back to the mysterious tower where they used the book, the talking dagger, and the blood of Torith the Mad to awaken a figure with a villainous past. Let's go! The world of Alurin, a land promising adventure, treasure, and glory at every turn for all the many, many heroes that inhabit it. From the far reaches of the frozen fjords to the sweltering jungles of Ishtka, opportunity awaits for all those brave enough to seek it. And, oh, wait, who are you? Wait, wait, wait. <clears throat> However, we are not the heroes of this tale. So welcome to the Party in Peril Villains Campaign. <laughs> Lancer, once again, am master of death. Wait, your name is Necro Lancer? Like yes. Lancelot? It's it, a little pretentious, don't you think? I didn't name myself. <laughs> Wait, were you the dagger this whole time? Yes. Waslow feels that he's touched you inappropriately, and he apologizes for that. Yes, things were quite awkward at times. No regrets. You have done well. Yet you must continue to serve me. Question. Why was Tord's blood necessary for your awakening? The blood of a changeling has many properties. It was the only blood that would be able to be used in this specific incantation to renew my original body so who killed torrid we did we did what explain yourself my servant nathan the lich oh nathan not so great yes oh, yeah his name was nate so who who awoken him who is also a necromancer that was i in the dagger uh, that's pretty metal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, on a technical scale, yeah. because you were in a dagger and the blade is, well, you get it. <laughs> I get it. Yes, I have been with you the entire time. Follow up question. Do we get yeah. paid for doing so well? In time, yes. With power. Oh, Waslo likes power. Yes. I I don't know much about power. Will you save our lives from grim crowd the maddening? Lives. What are lives to a master of death? Well, I, mean, I, we, I happen we, to value my life quite a lot, actually. We kind of want to um, stay alive. We can't really serve if we don't have lives, you know. If you die, I can raise you as one of my own minions. Just like Nate. Nate didn't look uh, so right. good. I mean, I, I, I see where you're coming from. <laughs> I'm really uh, feeling uh, it. Waslo sees where you're coming from. And that is the goal, my pets. A world without heroes and without villains. A world where we can finally achieve a real type of peace. We can destroy both sides. And I can control them all in undeath. 
Is there any chance in either in this scenario that we are able to retain our lives? What is your health care benefits? Serve me well and you retain full autonomy. Defy me and I kill you myself and raise you as one of my servants. Why did you kill Torith? I needed the blood. You couldn't have just sent Nate the Lich to just like poke him a little bit and like just get a goblet and leave him alive? Like what kind of all-powerful being are you if the only way you can get somebody's blood is by murdering them? Where's the fun in that? Uh, but you didn't even, it was, it was Nate. <laughs> I mean, without all the blood, we wouldn't have gotten that cool Hellraiser shit show that went down. <laughs> <laughs> now, are you ready to serve? What is your name, creature? Necrolancer. We oh yeah, you're this. right. <laughs> uh, I I don't I don't I don't know how how I mean I'm I'm not saying I'm not in like I'm not defying you. I'm just I'm not a big fan of. Authority. Waslo lives to serve. <laughs> <laughs> A wise choice. He looks to uh, Lilith. I slither to the beat of my own kind. There is not many of us. I have another mission. I cannot serve you. So you choose defiance. And you? He looks at Len. I already told you how I feel. Then the two of you have chosen death. Um, I, I wouldn't exactly say that. You know what? I, I was like, I thought, I, th I think as long as like, I, you know, I can see how this goes. Get a little tryout. Just like our dungeon. No, I was kind of getting into that, but I, I can switch pretty, pretty quickly. Let's negotiate. We keep our lives. Should we die, you have our permission to resurrect us. Wazlo thinks he was going to do that anyway. So <laughs> Wazlo doesn't know if there's much negotiation. Uh, consider this, though. What if the two defiant ones serve as Wazlo's personal servants? Why would that make us want to join? Well, Wazlo's hoping that he will at least leave you alive and in service of Wazlo. No. Will there still be gold and riches and shins? For every hero and villain we destroy together... Their bounties become yours. That doesn't sound so bad. So you get their lives, or their deaths, Weslo guesses, and we get the rewards. You built your army. We build our riches. I can respect that. Yes. What do we do, boss? What is thy bidding? What we need to do first is to wipe out the heads of both the heroes and villains. But you are not yet powerful enough to do so, nor do you carry enough political weight to scare our opponents into submission. Whoa, whoa. No one said anything about politics. I hate politics. Politics are necessary to position ourselves for the killing blow. Therefore, you three will each need to recover an artifact that will create fear in our foes. But first, you must find them. There are two ways to do this. The Kenku are notorious for under table dealings and information. If we must find one, search the slums of the Adri by stealing an airship from Ogden Keep. Elsewise, there is a tiefling merchant in Colvestir by the name of Sekiros, who deals in rare artifacts and sales. I know Sekiros. This is what you must find. For the Yanti. Tai, how do you say it? <laughs> is it Yantai or Yanti? I think it's Tai. I keep fucking that up every game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For the Yantai, the whip of Empress Savita, the last great Yantai ruler who tamed the greatest of dragons, Aethalax. For the goblin, the skull 
of Scrud the Orc Slayer, embodiment of revolution and revenge. And for the pixie, the blade Shadow Sting, forged from the stinger, torn from the guts of the great Hornet Queen herself. These three artifacts you must obtain, and it will make our foes tremble before us. I know Sekiros. Mm. He was a former lover. You can find him in Kulvistir, south of this tower. But be wary, Kulvistir is a port city for both villains, heroes, and mercenaries. I guess we're going to Kulvistir. Waslo agrees. Let's go south. Let's go visit my former lover. So new boss... A uh, thing, Lancelot guy. Um, Necrolancer. Sure. What? Anything that you could give to us to help us? I don't know. Like not fail. Hmm. Here. He waves his hand over towards a table, and there is a series of um of potions sitting there for you all to uh to pick at, and you can. Uh, add these potions to your inventory, to the bag of holding, if you like, or if anyone wants to take them specifically. Two potions of greater healing, two potions of resistance, one potion of clairvoyance, and one potion of water breathing. Cool. All right. I, I got them in there in the bag. No, you may rest here if you like, and then set out for Kulvestir. We've been walking all night. That sounds like a great idea. <laughs> also, do you know who has been squatting in my tower? Yeah. Are you going to tell me? Oh, they call themselves the Razor's Crest. Oh, I thought it was Razor's no. Edge. Is it R- Razor's Edge Lords? Oh, wait. Razor's Edge. Yeah. <laughs> those guys. <laughs> I will kill these Razor's Edge Lords and raise them. As my own minions. That's Thank fair. you. Waslo has one request. Please leave soup alive. Waslo always liked soup. Who is soup? Is that not a food? Uh, well, yes and no. This soup is just an ooze, so perhaps Waslo can adopt him as a pet. <laughs> Very or a friend, well. depending on what his sentience is. Serve me well, and I will provide you with soup. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. With this rest, do I get an inspiration? <laughs> what What do we get? You, you know to, what, I, Lilith, especially, I do want to give you inspiration for the dead body thing because that was really good. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Come on, back. Just was, Lilith. I mean, you have one already. Do I? Yes. I thought I didn't have it anymore. It was. It's literally. It was on there. I yeah. Can, I, you keep, I don't even you know. Keep pressing it. Well, I don't know anymore. It cause... was on there, and now you keep undoing it. If you keep messing with it, you're going to lose track. <laughs> well, it wasn't working before, so I could have used it and not yeah, been able to get rid of it. You did have it. You used your lucky, though. I did use my lucky. Yeah, but, but I, if we're about to rest, rest it, you'll now. get him back. Yeah. Yeah. So, with with about a day's journey, you make your way south towards Colvis Tier. Let's steal the works. Yeah, if you we can. Them. Yeah, let's steal them. I mean, they're there. I mean. Yeah, you've ridden them before, so they know your scent. They're going to be cool with you. We're back on good terms after my clever deception. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so you guys steal the Razor's Edge Lord's wargs again and ride them south towards Colvist here. And you get there about half a day's ride for you on the backs of the wargs. As you are, are on your journey, the forest kind of starts falling away into rougher rocks and more rugged terrain that essentially starts giving way into a little bit more of a a sand and and beaches and things like that off to the side as you're riding along the coast you can hear the sounds of of ocean waves and and seabirds and things like that and you start to see ships off in the distance as you finally approach the port city of Colvis Tier, is a very bustling city full of ships, and you see tons of of uh, different types of people moving around: humans, orcs, dwarves, elves, tieflings, centaurs, goblins, all kinds of stuff all over the place. 
moving around. There's merchant booths set up all over the place in different areas of the city. It feels very confusing. Like it's set up in, in quite a bit of disarray. Like it would make sense maybe if you looked overhead, but just walking into the city for the first time, everything just seems to be kind of jumbled and all over the place. Lots of small booths selling fish and weapons and bait for fishing, armor, and advertising repairs for ships and trying to uh, gather people to uh, join their crew on their ships and, and doing recruitment and things like that. There's several buildings also scattered throughout this town, some of them with large signs on them, signs like uh, you might see a, a painted crab on one, a building that has a, a painted wave on another, a skeleton of a fish on another, just dotting the the central hub of, of this city. I am very excited to be seeing Sequeros. So I think right before that, I'd like to go shopping and make sure I look extra sexy. For, <laughs> just in okay. hopes, in hopes that I get another chance with him. Okay. Uh, Len wants sure. materials for her spells so okay. that she can actually cast them. <laughs> so she's not always asking for crickets and fleas. Okay, so, uh, and Waslow, what, what is Waslow looking for? Or what's he up to? Like, what can I, what can I equip that would benefit spellcasting? If you wanted to search out an armorer, a tailor. A tailor would be good, so I can get, like, a fancier robe, maybe with some. Is there, like, an enchanter or something, or enchantress available that could make my, my new threads, like, have some bonuses to them? You could always look around and and try to see if you can find somebody that might be. I mean, this is so. This is a place where it there could be magical items for sale here because this is like one of the biggest hubs for selling interesting artifacts and and magical items that you're going to find in the entire world. So chances are, if you're looking for it, you're going to find it here. Okay. Then, yeah, I'll just seek out um, a magical item vendor or something uh, similar to that. Okay. Sounds good. Let's start with Lilith first. So you said you wanted to find something to make you look more attractive for Sekiros. Is mm -hmm. that what you... Okay. Yes. And so, I think we're all tagging along because there's only one bag with all of our money. Right. Exactly. So, so we'll start with, <laughs> with Lilith's thing first. So what exactly does Lilith want to find? Let's see. What is Sequeiros into again? Um, yeah, yeah. He's kind of a, he's a, he's a breast man, but also he's kind of freaky. So he's also into, let's see. I'm trying to think what, uh, what weirdness he'd be into. He's into smells. So I'm going to be looking okay. for a certain perfume that I can put in my my bosoms. <laughs> but this perfume is going to smell so horrible and disgusting to some people. But it's really like the pheromones. I got to enhance these pheromones for him. Okay, got it. As, as you're walking along, you catch the eye of a centaur woman who is just made up in all kinds of, of makeup. And she's she's at a booth with all kinds of trinkets, jewelry, and she has all these little bottles and things like that out there in front of her tent on um, little pedestals and things like that. Ooh, shiny. And uh, <laughs> and she, she sees you kind of slithering by and takes n note, and she's like, Oh, Ayanti! Hello, is there anything I could interest you in today? Please, please, please browse my wares. You look like you could use, uh, you could use a little something. What catches your eye, my Yuntai friend? I'm looking for the smelliest of potions to lather my body in. Oh. Okay, something with a good stench you're looking for. Yes, mm. what are your options? I believe I, I could find the perfect thing over here. Now, 
she holds up a uh, a vial of a, uh, a a liquid. It's a yellow liquid, but it has like a little brown swirl right in the middle, like a little brown tornado that's constantly moving. Oh, now this this was a beautiful scent crafted from the sphincter of a kraken itself. 600 years old it is. You'll never find another scent quite like this. Are you interested? Spray it in the air. Let me walk through it. Or How are you going to walk if it. you don't have legs? Let me <laughs> <laughs> spray it in the air. Let me slither through it. Okay. She she puts just a little bit of a spritz in the air, not enough that it would like st- you know stay on you, but just a tiny little spritz, and it is stanky. A smell that is so powerful to you, it is uh, amazing. <laughs> it, it is it is just like something that you would want to just roll around in all the time. And just like live it up, like you would just bathe in this daily if you if you could. And a lot of other people would would absolutely hate it and want to barf at it. In fact, Wazlo Len, could you please do Constitution saving throws? Oh, good God! Wazlo loves it though, since he came from the sewers. Well, not the sewers. Sorry, since he came from the swamps. Yes, Uh but this still might be a little powerful for even you. Okay. Six. Okay. One. Oh, oh no! You both vomit. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, what the hell? Uh, I Waslo loves it. It hurts so good. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you think? Uh, it's not bad. Not bad. It's. <sighs> I can definitely enjoy this myself. This. This is correct. Mm. By any chance, would you have anything in which blood would come out of the eyeballs of thy enemies? All right, uh, I'm going to step out for a moment and uh, <laughs> maybe see what I can find that's for... F- it's got the five-finger discount, all right? All right, see you guys later. So Len fucks off. <laughs> <laughs> Waslo, you sticking her hands? is still recovering. Uh. He, but he's still interested, so he just backs up a little bit. Oh, okay. Something a little stronger then. Okay. Let's just say if money was no object, what do you have behind the counter? But oh. money is an object, by the way. Let's just say it isn't. <laughs> oh, let me check. Let me check. <laughs> one moment. One moment. She uh, turns around and starts rifling through some things. And then... uh she uh, turns back around. Okay, now you didn't, uh, you didn't get this from me, but this vial here, and it's a tiny, tiny little vial full of a uh, just a very cherry red liquid. This here is a perfume crafted from the entrails of 17 different extinct species. Now I'll give a little spritz here, and I'm going to warn you, this is notably a cursed perfume, okay? So any adverse effects, you have been warned. She gives a little spritz. All right, Wazo and Lilith both do a constitution saving throw. Okay. Eight. Nat 20. (laughs) Nice. She's loving it. Lilith, this is heaven for you. <laughs> this is heaven. Waslo, um, <laughs> three more of your fingernails fall off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> and you do have one little teardrop of blood running down your cheek. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, why is Waslo still here? <laughs> <laughs> Can I like orgasm in the process where it just hit the right spot? There you go. I'm just going to shiver like, okay. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This, 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 this. That's, this is the one. Okay. That's 100 shines. All right. Do we have that? (laughs) 
<laughs> I, I don't know how much money y'all have. Rifle through the bag, pull out a hundred shines, and then just carefully place it in front of her and, and get a baby this vial. Um, so we're going to say that this, this vial has about, say, ten sprays in it. I only need one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and uh, it may be has so many nails. <laughs> it may be used as a weapon. <laughs> so um, it'll just give a. If you ever do use it as a weapon, we'll give it a a negative effect. I mean, it's not going to be deadly, but it will have a negative effect on whoever it's used against. Um, if they fail a Constitution saving throw. What is the name of this magical vial? Oh, this orgasmic vial. <laughs> this is the. Uh... Uh, perfume de la mortis. <laughs> number five. <laughs> perfume de la mortis, number five, Chanel. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will carry it delicately in my decolletage. Is that how you say it? Decollet, decollage, decollage. Like your your bosoms, your breasts, your decolletage, decolletage. I don't know what you're saying. I think that's how you say it. Let's see. Is that how you say it? <laughs> Decolletage. That sounds Decolletage. like that sounds like a thing. It does sound like a thing. I just Decolletage. don't know what it is. Yeah, a decolleta- de- decolletage. Let's see. Decolletage. 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 Oh, wow. Decolletage. Decolletage. Okay. A low neckline on a woman's dress or top. Oh, I've never heard hey. that word before. Okay. So Sounds delica- nice. delicately in my decolletage. There we go. Uh, do you think anyone takes fingernails as currency? <laughs> Lynn, where are you at now? Lynn has been on a bit of a spree. Uh-oh. A five finger spree. <laughs> oh my God, guys, this is a hot bed. Like, it's the perfect place. Nobody even notices half the stuff missing. Here, I got some stuff to put in the bag of holding. She pulls out of like various parts of like either up her arm sleeves or like in her in her shirt. And it's, it's not doesn't look like she has anything, but she eventually just pulls out four pairs of ornate earrings, a pearl mm-hmm. necklace, 20 shines and three gemstones and just kind of tosses it all in the bag. Like Jesus. this place is so busy. Nobody notices anything. Oh, it's a, it's a pickpocketer's heaven. All right. What was I looking for again? Next time I'm going to have you roll for those things, but I'll let you have it this time. I'll let you have it. Oh, right. I needed I needed some stuff for spells. Um, yeah, I guess we can go by that. Okay. What kind of <laughs> things are you looking for? Um, she either needs a living fleas or fine sand or rose petals. She needs fleas, sand, or rose petals. Yes. Okay. Um, there is sand all around you. Is there, oh, can I use one? Is there like a container for me to put it in? Like a little pouch that can go around her neck that she can have it at all times? Uh, not unless you have one like on your person already. Otherwise you can try to buy something. Yeah. All right. I I gotta get a, gotta get something to hold all this sand in. I'm not going to buy the sand. It's like all around. So I gotta get a bag for it. <laughs> As you're wandering around, you find a, uh, there's like a shack that just says general goo. On it, the D and the S fell off, so now it just says General Goo. <laughs> There's a human inside just kind of waiting there, like nobody's in there, and he's just got his head propped up, like, ah. <sighs> uh, do you have... What? Oh, yeah. um, sorry, I didn't see you. Yeah, obviously. Hey. hey, okay, yeah, I need a bag. A bag? Like a pouch. Okay. That can what kind of pouch? go around my neck so that I can carry stuff. That'd have to be a real small pouch, huh? Is that an insult? Well, no. I mean, literally. Are you trying to call me tiny? Well, I mean, you are. Doesn't mean I can't beat the crap out of you. I mean, you probably could. I don't know. I, I'm not that good at fighting, to be honest. I mean, that's why I run the store. Just find me a bag. <laughs> well, I'm going to have to look and see if I've got anything that small. I could go back there and look for it if you'd like. No, I'll get it. He gets up and goes in the back. <laughs> you hear him like rummaging around and stuff like that. And, um, he comes back with a bag that's like the size of you. Mm. And he's like, well, this is the smallest thing I could find. You know, but I, I know an enchantment. I could probably do. I could probably shrink it to your size. 
But, like, I'm going to have to charge a little bit extra for that. Well, so it's not my fault that you don't keep things in stock that would meet the needs of all of your clientele. Well, I've never had a pixie in my store before, so... Oh, well, then consider yourself lucky. I mean, I don't know that... I mean, I would be down on money, so I don't know if I would consider that lucky, to be honest. I'm giving you money for the pouch. Well, yeah, but I'm going to have to use some regents to... Spell, oh, nobody so cares. Technically, I'm going to be down on inventory. Well, then you are, and that's your fault. I'm not paying extra. Mm, then you're not getting a bag. Well, well, I'll go find another merchant that actually carries this kind of stuff. Mm, okay, yeah, good luck with that. Can I um, pass through, and since the stink is still on me, <laughs> can sure. it uh, sort of sway him? Like if I use some a little bit of intimidation or something, I'd be like, like prove that he he can totally uh, downsize it without the extra money for him. Do you want to use? An, yeah, you can do an intimidation roll. Yeah, sure. And how about you? Um, because you're wearing that perfume, I'm gonna go ahead and give you like a plus one to your intimidation right now. <laughs> so go ahead and do that. Okay, so I'm gonna roll. This one get to me. Ten. Plus your intimidation? Yeah, that's oh. zero. Oh, no. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, you got a plus one, right? Yeah, which is ten. Oh. I'm gonna, so what I'm going to do to make it fair, I'm going to roll against it and just see where we get. Okay. <sighs> All right. So you've been visiting that centaur with the shitty perfume, huh? <laughs> Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. You trying to if, you trying to intimidate me? Hmm? Um, maybe I'm trying to seduce you. It's not gonna work. <laughs> I don't I don't have a dick. Cut it off. That's okay. Yep. I don't it. need that. Snipped it right off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, Len's gonna use a cause fear. <laughs> Okay. Cause fear spell. <laughs> All right. All right. You think you're just this big tough human? Well, you're gonna give me the give me the bag, and you're actually gonna give me a discount for my troubles. And so she tries oh, yeah. to use okay. cause fear, which means uh, I awaken the sense of mortality in a creature I can see within range. A construct or an undead is immune. Target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or become frightened of you until the spell ends. All right. Um, frightened target can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turns, ending the effect on itself on a success. Okay. So the wisdom of 11. That's why I got to beat 11? Yeah. She tries the spell, so she just goes, Agla. Oh, what does that mean? Agla? That was my spell. Ag- my Agla. spell word. Because it's a verbal spell. Yeah. What? Why are you saying weird shit to me? What's up? What's that, what that supposed to do? You uh, was was with all you guys. So You so- walking into my store talking shit. What's going on? <laughs> you, you trying to... You trying to do something here? You think you're gonna you get discounts or? All right, this guy's driving me or? nuts. So she she starts like she pulls out like both of her little. She's got little. What is it? The little rap rap rapier rapier. Rapier. Yeah, she pulls her little rapier and a short sword. And she just starts going at the. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> she's just yeah. starts running. Is I don't know if anybody's gonna stop Are you gonna her. Try to kill him. <laughs> well, she's just pissed, so she okay. doesn't know what she's gonna do. Uh, she uh, just pulls it out and just like looks at him glaringly. All right, all right, all right. Uh, hang on. L- let's talk about this. Let's oh, now you want to... Oh, oh, now you want to talk. Well, yeah. Yeah, because blades talk, don't they? Well, yeah, do you think you can... You well, said that you could take me on. Well, here we go. On. Let's go. I just want to be clear. Blades don't talk. They, they oh, physically blades can't. do blades talk. Blades don't have mouths. What do you mean blades do talk? Blades don't have mouths. That's mm. stupid. That's they a long don't. story. <laughs> well, my patience is not long, so... I don't really want to hear and it. neither All is right. your dick anymore. <laughs> well, no, because... Oh. Uh. <laughs> so it's funny. So you, so you cut it off yourself. Yep. You, you might even did say it, you, myself. you nicked it. You nicked it off. Uh, I did. I joined a cult. We had to cut it off. Yep. No. Yep. <laughs> how, how, how was that? I've got regrets. You know. Maybe we should take our business someplace else. You know, I'll just shrink your stupid bag. But you got to pay full price for the bag, all right? Got it? Okay. Len? <sighs> fine. What is the price of the bag? Uh, It's just two shines. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> After you just stole 20. <laughs> it was just that long, drawn out <laughs> for two shines. <laughs> he was going to charge extra for the shrinking. It probably would have been three shines. <laughs> <laughs> Len is 
a stingy little. <laughs> we didn't even find out the price, and she just started going off. <laughs> like, no. It's the injustice. <laughs> He takes out like a few like powders and stuff like that, mixes them together, and then uh, he sprinkles some on the bag, blows on it, and then he goes, "Shrink the fucking bag," <laughs> and it shrinks down to to a, a a small size, but not small enough. And he goes, "Son of a bitch!" He gets out a little bit more powder, sprinkles it on there. He's like, "Shrink a little bit more, please." fucking shrink it shrinks down to the appropriate size and then he threads um like a little piece of string through it make like a little necklace with the bag and then he hands it over to len all right you guys get the fuck out of my store perfect thank you yeah whatever pleasure doing business with you bullshit (laughs) you've got (laughs) So you've got your uh, you got your bag. You can fill up with sand. Was there was other things that you wanted to? Um, I think she already has life fleas, so you I got, don't think she needs yeah. that. Yeah. Well, if you don't have fleas, Waslow's got fleas. Waslow's not sharing his fleas. That's a good point. <laughs> Those are Waslow's friends. You have found yeah. some fleas. I did before, find some fleas, and you've got crickets now. Yeah. Okay. Did you need anything else? Nope. You good? All right, Waslow. You are looking for um, an armorer or a tailor. You're looking for a tailor. Right. Like, yeah. Well. Okay. Yeah. A tailor who deals in, I guess, magical items or okay. magical cloths of some sort. Okay. So, um, as you you walk around, you pass by a few different shops that have different things, like different signs on the outside, um, indicating tailor shops. Like, a, there's a sign with like a thread and needle. There's a sign with a leather boot outside. And then you see a sign that shows a a robe with stars all over it. You see a little gnome, a little gnome woman. And uh, she's up on a uh, stack of books trying to reach a shelf. And she's trying to place um, some some garments up on the shelf and is much, much too small to get there. And she, she places it up there, finally reaches, and then... Like the books topple, she slips and lands her butt, and she's like, "Oh, oh, hello, hello. Um, what can I do for you?" I'm looking for some of your finest robes that will uh, make Waslow's spells hurt more. Make your spells hurt more, huh? Yeah. Well, Is that a thing? Um, let me browse my stock real quick. I'll see what I've got here. Um, give me a moment, please. Also, Wesla likes fire a lot. Oh, okay. Um, if, if the uh, if the robe could have flames on it, that would be nice. <laughs> no. Okay, I might have. I mean, I might have to sew th- sew something specific for that, but I can try. I'll have to see what fabrics I have in stock. Um, can you wait there? Sure. Okay. Thank you. And she walks around uh, into the back of the store behind the uh, the desk and things like that. Okay. Um, I don't have any flame fabric, so I'm sorry Aww. about that. Um, I, the, the only thing I have that might make your spells more powerful is is this one. Um, and she holds up this garment. It is um, very exquisite. A black robe adorned with silvery runes this is um rope of the arch magi um Ooh. yeah this this could be good it it could increase your spell save dc and attack spell bonuses by two so if you're interested uh yeah very interested oh. how much uh, 200 shines oh, oh. <laughs> uh can waslo talk you down at all um um i don't know maybe Okay, uh, Waslow attempts to talk you down. Why did you say that out loud? Well, that was Waslow's plan. Uh, how does how does one barter? You've never done that before. Uh, well, I do have I do have some good perception or persuasion, even so. Yeah, you could try you could try persuasion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I deceive my way into it? Yeah, you can yeah. Sh- certainly try whatever you want to try. Do do whatever you want, man. Okay. Wait, what were you going to say? Yeah, like maybe kind of like convinced that it's not authentic or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like me. it's a fake or something. Yeah. So, so Wazel's holding it and he's like, 
as he's kind of feeling it up and down, and she notices he doesn't have fingernails. Those are missing, but that's <laughs> that's beside the point. Where's your fingernails? Oh, d- don't worry about it. When you're a, such a powerful caster, sometimes it it uh, uh, just requires regions of your own body, and uh, fingernails was that case for Waslow. Okay, just don't yes. bleed on it. Yeah. Uh, d- no promises. So, <laughs> as Waslo feels this fabric, he, he's not certain that it's authentic. What can you do to prove it? Um, um, I don't know. The silvers um, look off to Waslo. The silvers? The black isn't black enough. But it's black. More of a gray, a dark gray. But and she pulls out, Anyone like, else? an identical robe that is gray and she's like but this one's the gray one yeah well that's like a light gray this is a darker gray not a black <laughs> okay. false advertising so go things. ahead and r- go ahead and roll uh 15 all right so i'm gonna roll against it oh i'm sorry i i don't know i i, I don't know why it doesn't look right um maybe there was something wrong with it i i don't know why um maybe- that's okay Wazlo will still take it off your hands but there has to be some sort of discount for a uh, lesser quality robe. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, maybe I, I could take some shines off. I could do 170 shines. Uh, is that okay? Waslo is thinking more along the lines of 150. Um, <laughs> I would have gone lower. Go to 20. <laughs> I, 20? I, yeah, I'll give you 20. Well, it's a I fake. Could, I'm not that good of a liar. Uh, I'll do... <laughs> I can do 150 shines if you have anything else to give with it. Waslow's body is not for sale. No, I didn't. <laughs> no, I didn't mean your body. Un- unless you need fingernails, because Waslow's got those in spades. How many are we talking? Uh, Waslow has three fingernails he could spare, along with the 150 shines. Deal. Sold. All right. Let me so, see. Hand, oh, wait, hand me over those. Hand me those fingernails right now. <laughs> Wazzle hands over his three the fi- three fingernails that have fallen off. <sighs> she starts gnawing on one of the fingernails. Oh god. <laughs> They're real, Wazzle promises. <laughs> okay, here's your robe. She she hands you the robe. <laughs> Sweet. So 150. By the way, that is like a, a fucking legendary goddamn robe. Like, you're not going to get a better one. <laughs> <laughs> you've gotten some stuff. You've gotten some gear and things like that. Okay. Pleasure doing business with you. She's she's just gnawing the hell out of those fingernails. And you too. <laughs> <laughs> she pockets one of them for later. <laughs> Lilith, knowing, knowing Sekiro's... He typically would be doing his trading and deals and stuff like that in one of the nicer taverns around. So you want to look for the nicest tavern. And by looking around, that seems to be the White Cap, which is the tavern with a uh, it's got a sign on it with a big wave on the sign uh, with a big white cap on it. And it's not too far away from you. Cool. So as a group, we are traveling. We find the White Cap Tavern. There's, there's quite a few people there, but it is, it is quiet for a tavern. Um, everyone's pretty much keeping to themselves. You you see just various kinds of people sitting around, an elf sitting on a, a bench outside just drinking by himself. Uh, you do see like a, a rat folk and a hobgoblin speaking with somebody at a table outside a trio of goblins in a corner table conversing to each other excitedly a couple human pirates sitting at a table uh talking amongst each other in quiet tones and over at the bar uh sitting across from the bartender uh who's a a large orc wiping down a couple glasses you see a dark-skinned tiefling with nice long horns and white hair speaking with a human ship captain of of some sort who is um, kind of speaking very animatedly and very excitedly. You can't quite tell what they're they're talking about, but you can definitely tell that the the ship captain-looking guy is very into whatever conversation is going on. 
and eventually, after uh, a few exchanges of some sort of goods, something wrapped in a little bit of uh, cloth and some exchange of money, you see the uh, the ship captain walk off, and Sekiros is sitting there at the tavern, at the bar. <gasps> there he is. Okay, I'm gonna let you take the lead on this one. <laughs> Cover me as I put some more of this beautiful potion on my skin. It just just walk like twenty feet that way. <laughs> Lazo only has so many fingernails left. <laughs> okay, I'll just put just one drop just to seduce him. Let so Lazo walk- know if you need a wingman. Okay, so you're walking a little bit and then you're applying more of that stuff. I'm just, I'm just doing like, since it's a tiny little vial, I'm going to put like my finger on the top and then like put it upside down a little bit and then kind of like tap on my little, you know, the little temple points, right? Sure. Like in the middle of your chest, behind your ear kind of thing. And okay. like on your wrist. So it's just like a little, little dabs. So <laughs> I'm going to roll something real quick. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. So as you... <laughs> So you apply that. So you were standing by the uh, the table with the two uh, human pirates as you applied <laughs> it, and as you do it, they start gasping and coughing horribly, <laughs> and you can see blood start dribbling down their eyes, and they they both fall out of their chairs onto the floor. <laughs> uh, Sekiros looks up from his drink, and he's like, "Ah, oh, do my eyes deceive me? Is that Lilith?" Lilith, my love, I have not seen you in in many decades. What brings you here? How did you find me? I was piqued and aroused when your name was called upon by my new master. Oh, I see. Oh, what is that beautiful scent you wear? Oh, you like? I thought I of you. It makes... Ah... Oh. The smell makes it feel like the backs of my teeth could bleed. Mmm. I it like is when you speak dirty. Yes. <laughs> I am here for work and pleasure, though. Oh. Should you choose to uh, spend some time. Well, then let us get to the work so we have more time for the pleasure. Mmm. Are you still familiar with rare... Artifacts? Is that still your business? Absolutely. Here, take a look at this. I actually just procured this from an idiot on board this ship who just left. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, this is uh, worth quite a bit. And this man was paid um, not quite so much. Not quite so much as it was worth. But consider this a gift to you, my love, for renewing the spirit between us and he hands you the uh the item wrapped in the cloth and what this is is a horn like a um like a almost like a bull horn this is the horn of jesticles guys this is a patreon item ah crafted by jeremy hausen oh jeremy it is a drinking horn that never runs out of ale (laughs) however if you use it as a bonus action in combat, it has one charge per long rest that you can use to send you into a berserker rage. It will raise your AC by two for five rounds of combat, and it will restore your health up to at least five times your hit die. You can decide how many times you want to roll your hit die. It's up to you. So you can choose one, two, up to five. Um, but just the one time when you use it in battle. Here's the catch. After the effects wear off, so once those five rounds of combat are over or combat ends, uh, you're going to take half of what you gained in damage, no matter where your HP is currently at. So it is possible that if you took a lot of damage afterwards, you could die afterwards because it is hangover damage. All right? Dang. So that is the horn of Jesticles. That's cool. Yeah. Yes. So you take half of the damage that you... Whatever HP that you gained, 
once that five rounds are over or combat ends, mm -hmm. cut that HP that you gained in half, and you're going to take that much damage. Okay. No matter where your HP is at at the time. So let's say you got 15 health out of it. Uh -huh. We would round it up to, like, you'd be taking eight damage. Oh, okay. At the end. Even if you only had eight health left. Thank <laughs> you very much, Jeremy Hausen, for your support on Patreon and for crafting this great item. Yes, thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, and it run it never runs out of ale. You said nope, nope. So, uh, like out of combat, you can just keep drinking from it all you want. It's just in combat that it expends itself for that one thing. Okay, but out of combat, you can drink from it forever. Oh, Siqueiros, so thoughtful of you. Yes, what? it was a steal, almost literally. <laughs> So. Waslo, would you like to enjoy this ale here? It never runs out. Waslo's a pretty good distance away because he can't stand the smell. Yeah. Or he, Who are you he likes talking it, to? But, yeah. <laughs> like you went up there by yourself, basically. Oh, okay. Never mind. I will I will I will put this in a safe place in my bag. Yeah, okay. So tell me, Lilith, uh what is the work that you uh Need help with. Oh, you know how I enjoy whips and skulls and blades in our foreplay. I do remember, yes. <laughs> I have the scars to prove it. <laughs> I'm actually looking for some rare artifacts amongst our beautiful tools. You wouldn't happen to know where a creature like myself can indulge in such. Yes, I could, but uh, you may need to be more specific. Um, uh, is, there's a, a specific whip, uh, skull, or blade you are looking for. I, I may be able to, to help. Anything ancient. Anything from our kind. Are you talking about the whip of Empress Savita? Am I? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> oh, yes. I love the way you say it. Say it again. <laughs> the whip of Empress Savita. Mm, you are quite familiar. Where might I meet this whip? Mm. Well, the whip was never recovered. So it still has to be somewhere out in Ishtka, where you are from. Uh, there are two possible locations. Um, one moment, let me pull out a map so I can show you. I'm, yes. I'm actually gonna pull up a map and show everybody. Yeah. We're gonna be doing some planning, folks. Cool. Whip it out, why don't you? There are two possible locations. Savita's Fall it's the last known location of where she was defeated in battle. However, legend has it, her own dragon actually gobbled her up. So it could also be where his remains lay, uh, which is bordering Morning Sands. This would be a pretty far destination if you set out now. And you would need to travel by boat, as there are uh, dragons claiming the air over there, so airship is out of the question. It's a good thing we're by a port. Uh, so you were looking for two other items? A blade and a skull. A blade and a skull. Ah, a blade and a skull. There are many blades, but a skull. Ah. Sekiro, sekiro, sekiro. A skull. Ah, the skull of Scrud the Orc Slayer, possibly. Is, is that what you're looking for? Yes. Aha. Uh, so if we look at the map, the skull of Scrud the Orc Slayer was last seen as a decoration in the tent of Deathhoof, who operates a gladiator arena out of Balgarus in North Bedlam. That's also a long journey from this point, though... Not as long as Ishtka, if you can steal an airship. However, to do that, you would have to sneak into Ogden Keep. Or I know you were probably not apt to return, since that's where you were held prisoner for a time, if I do remember correctly. Oh, yes. Good times. 
Now, a blade. Uh, there are many famous blades, so I am sorry, my love. That you would have to narrow down for me. The Hornet Queen Stinger, known as Shadow Sting. The blade Shadow Sting, yes. Ah, now that, that I have heard much about. That is currently wielded by a lone bandit called the Unseen, working somewhere between the East Wald and Hammerfall. That's the closest area to this location. I guess there are two ways you could reach that area. You could take a ship from here to the Dergar Mines of Uzavar and then Balgoltha, where you shouldn't run into much trouble. Beyond that is human and elven territory, but that's where the Unseen supposedly operates. There's a few neutral towns out that way, so you'll need to gather information there. You could also travel up north and then west by foot, but it'll all be through human and elven territory, which could be very dangerous for you. Question. Yes. Is this map, uh, like, let's say, you know, the world is round. Yes. <laughs> like, it if, is. We, if we were going to Hammerfall, right, and then we cross mm-hmm. the ocean to the west, will we get to Ishka that way? Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, this map, Siqueiros, is there another one available for me? Yes, I can give you this map. I have plenty of maps. You are quite the gentleman that I remember. Uh, yes. In fact, here, uh, tavern keeper, sir, may I? Yes. Uh, I require uh, ink and pen, if you will. Here you go. Yes. He writes, to my love, Lilith, signed Yosekiros on the map. I will treasure this for as long as I live. Good, and may it bring you many more treasures. Mm. Would you like to investigate my treasure? You know I would. I am available for pleasure right they now. They do have uh, many rooms upstairs. Yes, let's explore. Yes, let's say uh, retire for the night. As uh, you guys start like walking off kind of to go up the stairs to the tavern, the two human pirates finally stand up and they're like, (sighs) All right, you attacked us unprovoked, and now we're going to finish the fight. Prepare to die. Ah, Sigeros, our foreplay... It begins. Thanks for listening to this episode of Party in Peril Villains, a podcast produced by Nerdsloth.com. If you had a good time, please just do us one little favor and share this episode or clip your favorite parts of the episode and share that with any friends, family, or on social media. And don't forget that you can impact our players and give them an edge by giving us a rating on Apple Podcasts, which translates in-game as peril points, which they can use to purchase special items, including weapons or gadgets crafted by our NerdSloth Patreon supporters. Many of the sound effects heard in the show were licensed from Sword Coast Soundscapes, so please visit swordcoastsoundscapes bandcamp.com to hear all of their amazing ambient and background audio productions. And also a huge thank you to Atalus Music for providing the villain's theme song, Drop the Beat, my lord. You can find even more of his fantastic modern-day fantasy mixes on YouTube or SongTrader. Love y'all, and roll those 20s! Presented by NerdSloth. A place for lazy nerds. If you like what you heard, consider donating at patreon.com slash nerdsloth so we can continue bringing you quality shows. Be sure to also leave us a review and share your favorite episodes and clips on social media. If you're looking for more content, visit us at nerdsloth.com.